Hi there guys, today I'm going to do a fast track tutorial on taking your Arduino sketch and uploading it to a AT Tiny chip uh, to shrinkify shrinking your projects into something very compact. And today's example we're going to be using some very simple code. We're just going to be uploading the blink skits right onto this chip. So Right here, as you can see, I have the Blink sketch running. And I just hooked up a external LED to pin number 13. And it's blinking away. So, we want to transfer this to this chip right there and do the exact, exact same thing. Luckily for us, there are some people who have done all the hard work over at MIT Media Labs. So, of course, we're going to need some libraries and some code for that to work. And we're going to get that over from highlowtech.org. And I will post links in the descriptions directly to the website where you can get what is needed. So, when you are here, just fast track down to something called download. You can see it's a small menu item called download right here. And you can download for Arduino 1.6 or 1.0. I am, of course, using uh, 1.6. And there are some installations instructions below. The installations instructions, in short, is you unzip the file you get and just copy the AT Tiny folder into your Arduino slash hardware folder. So you can see you have it right there. And the subfolder is AVR, in case you need to double check. That's it. Once done, relaunch your skits or Arduino IDE. And we are ready to go. And the way to check if you have uploaded it correctly is to click Tools, Board, and you can see there is this new thing called AT Tiny right there. Okay. If you noticed before that my uh, small AT Tiny chip has a green marker on top of it, then you are correct. That is because uh, some of my chips, like this one, doesn't. And what this indicates to me is that the chip has a bootloader. A bootloader is a piece of software just like you have on your computer. Some software that tells the computer what to load and which order to do it. This small chip needs something similar. So that's the first thing we need to upload to this. Then we can upload the software. So let's unhook our Arduino and take the pins out. There we go. Flip this around. And I have a empty protobot. I will now show you how to hook up your AT Tiny to the Arduino so you can program it. But I almost forgot before we do that, we need to prepare the Arduino. So I'm going to repower the Arduino. Going to switch to the EDA. There we go. And then on the file examples, we have this thing called Arduino ISP. Click that once. This program needs to be uploaded to the Arduino before we begin. Don't change anything, just leave it as is. All we're going to do is check is it the correct port? Yes, it's Uno. Is it on the correct port? Yes, and hit upload. This is, of course, going to override anything you have on the board. But that's what we really want. We want to use the board as a programmer for our AT Tiny chip. Here we go. You can see done uploading. Let's just close this thing. Head back to the Arduino. And you can see the LED is permanently on. I'm going to disconnect this. And now it's time to hook up this small AT Tiny. There is a drawing on uh, the website. I'm just going to find out, find the things we need. We need four wires, a condensator or capacitor if you want, and a ground wire and a power wire. That's it. So let's see if I can find the drawing myself. There we go. It's right there. You can see. Your AT Tiny, power, ground, and just hooked up pretty straightforward. And you need this capacitor to prevent the Arduino from resetting. So let's do that. 
First thing we do is hook up the capacitor. You have to be careful to turn it the right way when you look at it very closely. You see there is a black line. The black line indicates which way is forward. Uh, sorry, ground. So I'm going to place it in ground and reset. So something like that. Might be hard to see. But it's hooked up into ground and reset. I'm just going to flip it a bit over so it's not getting in the way. Then I'm going to take my 5 volts output and hook that up to the top left of your AT Tiny. And if you're wondering which way to turn your AT Tiny, there is a small dot on it or a indent if you want. And that's supposed to face that way in the direction of Arduino in our case. So if there is a dot like on mine, I don't know if you can see it, but let's try. Mm, yeah, you might be able to see it. That dot indicates leg number one. Um, and it goes like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So power goes into number eight. Ground from the Arduino goes into number four, like that. And then we have these wires. So pin number one goes into Arduino number 10. Pin number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 goes into Arduino 11. Number 6 goes into 12. And the last one before the power pin on the AT Tiny goes into 13. And that's it. We are now ready to uh, program the AT Tiny using the Arduino. However, before we begin, I'd like to show you what I've done instead of this because I do this several times each day. So this is quite annoying. So I made my own shield instead. This thing. You can see I am able to hook up AT Tiny 85 and 45, 84 and 44 chips. There's a green arrow, my condensator is shown right there, a capacitor. And it's a bit of a mess down below, but it's fitting directly on my Arduino. So let's just get that on there. There we go. It's a bit scratchy making some nice sounds. Just rechecking all the pins are incorrectly. Yes. There we go. And then I'm able to just simply take my small AT Tiny and put it in its socket. I'm going to power it. This is exactly the same as if we did it on the breadboard, except this is just faster. Now, software time. There we go. First thing we want to do is burn the bootloader onto the chip. But as you can see down to the right below my picture, it says Arduino Uno. We may need to make sure to change that. So click on tools. Click on Programmer and make sure your programmer is now set to Arduino as ISP. Mine is always that because it will even work when uploading to a Arduino as normal. So I always have mine on that, even when using uh, the Pro Mini or those that come with their own ISPs. Then I'm going to Board and I'm going to click the AT Tiny. I'm going to click Tools again and clock, and I'm going to make sure it's 8 megahertz internal, because if I'm choosing external, I need to add my own crystal. Uh, the Arduino has its own external crystal, but we don't in our case. So we're using a internal crystal in the embedded in the chip, and we need to make sure it's 8 megahertz, because if we choose 1 megahertz, everything is going to run 8 times slower. So this thousand milliseconds turns into eight thousand milliseconds and that's not fun likewise if you go too fast uh, it's going to run too fast but then you need external uh, crystals anyway eight megahertz is the way to go 
On my processor, I make sure I have chosen the correct chip. In our case, it's ATtiny85. And on port, it's still COM port 5. Now I can see down to the right that that is correct. But before I upload, I notice a error in our Blink program. It says pin 13. So if we look at our AT tiny chip, I have this screenshot right here. We can see there's only eight pins, so there's no pin 13. <clears throat> so we need to decide which pin are we going to use to blink the LED. Well, you can see one and eight we can't use. The same with four, so that's ground. But we can use one of these or one of these, so that leaves us with five pins for input and output. I think I'm just going to use this one, it says five right here, but that's the leg numbers. You can see leg one, two, three, four. And you can see there's that indent. And in my case, it was a circle right here. So that's pin one, or sorry, leg one and leg eight. I want to use leg five, but that's out here. You can see it's called pin zero. Don't ask me why. They are not in some sort of synergy, but that's just the way things is. Pin 5. We need to remember that, because before we begin, again, I mentioned it before, we need to upload that damn bootloader, and I keep forgetting it. It's easy, we have prepared everything, we can leave the Blink program on screen, just click on Tools, click Burn Bootloader, and you can see it says Burning Bootloader to I.O. Board. And it's done. It's really fast. That's it. That means the chip is ready to accept code. Of course, you can upload it anyway, but it won't run. Uh, then you need to start up the chip manually. In this case, it will start as soon as it's powered. That's nice. So, let's revise. That's pin 0. So we are going to change all the number 13s to 0. So, pin mode Zero, 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 and upload. Giving it a minute. Compiling, uploading, and oh, there you go. It, it's using nine bytes. So that's a very small program, but that's what we like to do. Now, this is programmed and ready to use. I'm just going to disconnect it from the Arduino and place it over here. I'm also going to disconnect my Arduino. I'm not going to use it anymore uh, right now. I'm just going to use this protoboard and I'm going to press that right in there. Pin leg one is over here. Pin zero is top right. So I'm going to connect my LED to the top right as there. And I'm going to add a resistor to the output of the LED, we need to limit the current uh, flowing through the LED, else we might burn it. Of course, we won't burn it since it's only running 5 volts, but that's anyway. Then we need to add some ground. And that's pin 4 right here, that's ground on the chip, so let's put that right next to the resistor. We also need power. That's pin 8, so that's over here. And we're just going to hook that up to the power rail. There we go. And whenever I power this rail, we should enable this chip to blink or run the sketch. So I'm going to move that up here. I'm going to put in a power connector in the hot. I'm also going to add a ground wire. And now we can just add a battery. Where's my battery? It's right here. I have two AA batteries in a box, just hooked up with some some of these, uh, what do you call them? Alligator clips. Anyway, ground on the white, there we go, and power on the red. And things are not running. That means we need to debug. Let's see. 
Okay, back again after some testing. Uh, apparently, uh, this entire row I was using, row number five on my protobot, is not connected underneath anymore. Meaning, when <laughs> I was trying to power it from after, it uh, was not sending power to the chip, so there was was missing a connection. However, it's working. As you can see, it's on battery, and power is on, and our sketch is running uh, from the Arduino, which is pretty awesome. So we have a entire Arduino project running on a small chip using only two AA batteries. How awesome is that? Uh, I'm sorry about the, the problem with the, the connection down there. This is actually a first time for me where where I might have broken a connection inside a protobot. Uh, but well, then we learned. So uh, I think if I move it one down, we can produce the error again. It's a bit strange, I think. Was it out here? That's also working. So, apparently, well, we can test like this. So, no, that's working. That's also working. So, for some reason, I didn't get a connection up through the one of the legs. That didn't mean that there was anything wrong with the chip. There was nothing wrong with the lamp. There was nothing wrong with the code. My actual error or problem was a hardware error or connection inside the protoboard. Well, nice to know, and we were able to fix it. So that's also a very important part to identify the errors and fix them. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed and learned something. If you liked, please leave a thumbs up or a comment, and I'll see you next time. Bye.